Okay, yes, we are doing a ranked workshop. So what that means is that we do assigned roles in a Shoutcast mini tournament. We then offer advice on your champion choice, team comps, decision making builds, everything we can to help you learn to play better and learn from your mistakes. So uh, I am here to offer advice on general gameplay knowledge, mechanics, that sort of thing. Requines here to comment on overall plays, mindset, and just generally w the idea is that you can learn from your mistakes to learn to play better. And yes, that game is made from pure DDR bullet hell. Um, yeah, no, it's Osu. It's it's fun. So picks and bans are done here. We have on blue team a Yasuo Jinx Lee Sin ban, and on purple team we have a Mundo Leona Cassidy ban. Uh, we then have on blue team a top Riven, a mid a mid Vigar, I guess. Yeah, and then an AD carry. Siver, a jungle Sichuani, and any support, same as before. I was trying to remember if there was the same picks and bands because we told them to. Uh, so then we have what appears to be a Jace top, I'm going to assume, and Nidalee mid. They then have a Blitzcrank Caitlyn bot lane and a Warwick jungle. Uh, Warwick jungle, Warwick in general is undervalued. I feel he is pretty strong right now, but he's much better top lane as like the, the 0 30 0, or I guess it's like 2 28 0 is the new meta for like super tanky top laners but jungle warwick still remains all, uh, he has all the problems he did before the new masteries but he doesn't get most of the advantages that they bring and so that that's why generally top lane is a little bit better uh interesting that we have a cleanse on caitlin uh that's going to be for then versus the Sejuani, Vigar, and Annie stun. So I really like that choice. It boils down to how well she uses that cleanse. Cleanse is a very high skill cap uh, summoner skill, whereas barrier you just like mash the button and you probably live through whatever burst they throw at you. Cleanse is a lot more niche where you need to know exactly what CC you're removing with it and use it at the exact right time or you're just going to still be chain CC'd. I'm a big fan of the Sejuani pick as well. Sejuani is really undervalued right now. Oh, yes. Uh, her, her clear time is slightly slow, and she can't really counter jungle. But at the same time, she can escape from being counter jungled herself. She's a strong, not necessarily a strong duelist, but she isn't going to fold over like a paper tiger either. And her ult is just one of the best in the game right now. It's super forgiving. She can launch it off from range. It can disengage or engage. So I'm a huge fan of Sejuani. Yeah, uh, it's essentially... Uh arranged a Mumu or Malphite alt where it's your initiation it's your disengage it's like everything you could want it to be now that being said they have nerfed it a number of times in terms of cooldown and everything but it's still a, a game changing alt by all means and it, it combines very well with the Annie alt and the the Vigar cage right and that's why I'm a little not skeptical of the Caitlyn cleanse but that's going to be one heck of timing. If it's if it goes off on, for instance, in the Tibbers, and then she gets stunned in Sejuani ulted and key blasted, uh, maybe it was good and better to take barrier. But on the other hand, she's Caitlyn. She's the safest champion in the game, so that'll be very exciting to watch. Exactly. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how well it goes. Uh, I still don't know if that's a mid Nidalee top Jace or a mid Jace top Nidalee. My guess is that it's a Nidalee... Oh, wait, I could just look at who I assigned them to what roles. I'm smart. Um, Decision-making skills here, folks. Yeah, Nidalee is mid. Nidalee is a problematic champion in terms of design in that she's she can hit you from spears and she can fight you close up. So I'm wondering, from a plot perspective, how you would uh, suggest a counterplay against the Nidalee. You shove her pre-6 because she has no wave clear, and you don't get hit by spears and Nidalee becomes useless. Uh, that's not to say that Nidalee is a weak pick because she's played all the time in LCS and that sort of thing. But from a solo queue exp uh, experience, Nidalee is very, very good at punishing poor play, and she's very, very good at amplifying good play on your team. But if both teams are sort of even, Nidalee doesn't contribute a lot to it. Wait, I don't understand. Don't get hit by Nidalee Spears? I, don't I know. Have... I know, but like, I if you are a higher a ranked player, you're pretty good at dodging them, and Nidalee Spears will almost never hit you. Ah, uh, they called me. I just, I just need I to step in front of them. I can't not. <laughs> 
But yeah, my, my concern though is that from a solo queue mentality, if your team is, oh my god, must five man team fight mid every five seconds, you're not letting Nidalee do her job. Nidalee's team fight is pretty much shit. She needs to be able to dance around the edge of the fight throwing spears and chunk someone out. So if your team is trying to force an engage, Nidalee becomes useless. If the enemy team is playing smart, Nidalee becomes useless. It's only when either the enemy team is a lot worse than you that Nidalee becomes amazing, or your own team is able to amplify your own strength. So, so they say, you landed a spear, all in, engage, right then, without any delay or hesitation. Those sort of situations, Nidalee is an absolute monster. But from a reliability standpoint in solo queue, I have a lot of issues with Nidalee and how reliant it, she is on her team knowing how to play with a Nidalee. And I think we can all agree that the Nidalee who is last pick is forced to support and goes fine, and Hilox and Nidalee is like the bane of this game and just, oh my god, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. I'm interested to see if uh, Ancient Renegado has improved his Annie at all. I know um, he was the first person to ever donate to our stream, and uh, as a thank you, I did offer some like one-on-one -on -one advice for him. So I expected him, uh, I spectated him playing a game of Annie and offered some advice. And I've seen him play Annie once or twice since that time, and every time I'm just like, oh, the advice I gave you, you don't seem to be using it. And uh, again, that's not an insult to him. It's possible he just hasn't had a chance to practice any, or he doesn't switch between champions very well and retain a lot of what he's learned. But I'm, I'm just interested to see how he plays it. My main complaint I had with him is he wasn't charging his stun. He'd walk into a fight and he wouldn't have his stun up. And that, that's a big, big no-no as Annie. You need to be counting your charges. Right, Annie has a deceptively low skill floor and that you can pick Annie up and do okay with her. So a lot of people go, I've mastered Annie, you know, I get a tippers drop once in a while, but, but a really good Annie who's practice and does stun management will just blow you away. So it's really interesting to watch good Annies versus great Annies. And, and a lot of that boils down to how they abuse their auto attack range. Annie's auto attack is essentially Caitlyn AA harass. Like, you should be constantly being pelted with a Annie AAs, regardless of if you're mid lane or if it's an Annie support, where Every single time you do a CS, she's going to AA you probably one to three times just for you getting one CS. It, it's like trying to fight a Lulu or a Caitlyn where you're just constantly being pounded and your health is going down and you're just cursing life and wishing you had a Doran's shield. Right, with Blitzcrank and Caitlyn, that's a mean lane for Nanny to be against, especially if she gets caught out. Sivir does have spell shield, but if either of them gets snagged, especially into a trap, that's going to be very painful, and I'm not sure if there's a way to escape alive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're, they're going to have to be really, really careful of that Blitzcrank grab. And um, I've said many times in the stream that I just don't think Blitzcrank is worth picking, but that's not to say Blitzcrank is bad. It's that... Again, you are relying on being able to outplay the enemy consistently or land a, gr a lucky hook. And it, it's the, oh my god, I just grabbed a Namumu GG, we just lost kind of effect. Or you miss a hook level 1 in your oom and they engage on you because you're useless for 18 seconds. That's not a fun feeling. Right. And so it, it's going to boil down to how well they play with that. And unfortunately, yes, Blitzcrank is a strong character. But he's not a reliable character. I, I don't think anyone's going to consider him all that reliable. I see a lot of people say, why pick Blitzcrank when you can pick Thresh? And there is some truth to that statement. Thresh does have a pretty insane kit. But I would say look at Fiora and Yasuo. If you put them side by side, you'd have to be insane not to say that Yasuo has the objectively stronger kit. Yet Fiora dumpsters all over Yasuo. And that's because a champion is more than the sum of, you know, their flashiest plays. Blitzcrank is a very binary champion. And when he's on, he it's just wins games, period. Yeah, I, I believe it was the first workshop game I ever joined. I actually took over the idea of doing ranked workshops. There, there's been them running for months and months and months. And back before I ever hit gold, I took part in a ranked workshop. I played Blitzcrank. We did a Blitzcrank Jace bot lane. And I just happened to be on that game. And it, it was absolutely incredible. We, we were landing every single hook. We were landing these incredible plays. I then played them the next game. I couldn't do anything anything and it was just in my mind I'm thinking like I, I was just getting depressed I was like how am I doing so much worse I can't hit a single grab and that's just it you're relying on the uh, yourself playing your 
perfect, perfect game, and the enemy playing slop, sloppy and essentially walking into your hooks. So we have purple team invading blue side. Blue team knows that they're there. Uh, and it looks like they're pulling out. They're choosing not to fight. And that's the right call. Because Blitzcrank, uh, Caitlyn, that's a mean-ass team to to fight against at level 1. So instead, they're pulling out. They're, so Juan is going I, for her red instead. And, you know, they're just giving up that, that objective. That being said, that was incredibly sloppy. Blitzcrank can pull the blue over the wall, and they can take it right there. In the meantime, Caitlyn's still mid. So, I, I, I just think that was a really, really sloppy play on their part. They could have just let Blitzcrank go, they grab the blue over the wall, and boom, you get a free blue buff. But now Caitlyn is going to be down about a level, maybe even a level and a half of experience by the time she gets bought, and Blitz is going to be even further behind. I might suggest Blitz try and go in mid for a grab, and it doesn't... Yeah, Vigar was completely exposed, Blitzcrank could have got a grab, and he hesitated. Purple team wet, got off to a very ambitious start. Then they got spotted by Riven, and so they were detected. They couldn't do the sneak anymore, and they, they, they had a problem. They could either go in as five and do a coordinated play, which is difficult without voice chat. I will grant them. Like, they are a collection of acquaintances playing together for the first time. Or they could back out, and they kind of didn't really choose either side. They kind of just middled around, and that was going to cost them in lane. Mm -hmm. it, it, it is really going to harm them. That being said, it's not as though it's uh, insurmountable odds or anything at this point. I want to compliment Nidalee. Every spear I see her throw seems to be pretty much on point. Not to say that every single one's hitting, but it at least has the chance to hit. She's not throwing them off into the complete wrong direction. I also want to compliment the Jace. He abused his level 2 advantage and put a lot of pressure onto this Riven and, and got a, a pretty decent advantage from that. Uh, now Riven is actually trying to engage onto Jace. Jace able to turn around and just pelt her with uh, the triple, the hypercharge, that's why it's not triple attack. Hypercharge is so very effective. Sejuani getting in behind though, and Riven's gonna set up an incredibly potent, potent gank here. And yeah, it, first blood it goes over to Sejuani, but that was completely set up by just him playing too aggressively on Jace, and then Riven being able to just jump in and bait him into a fight. Jace is in an odd sort of limbo right now. Blitzcrank is trying to set up a pull on purple, but it doesn't seem to be... If he can hit a pull on Sivir, she's dead, but it doesn't seem like he's going to be able to quite yet. Um, oh. Jace is in an odd spot because he is... Yep, pull missed. He is uh, currently considered to be broken by Riot, and they are going to be reworking him by Zephyrius, actually, so that'll be really fun when he actually comes out. But for now, he is kind of just in the Eve state where please don't play him. We are working on it. Exactly. And I have two concerns that have popped up here. First one being, they did a really good play where they were trying to give the blue buff over to Nidalee at like level 3. That would have been a huge advantage. Nidalee then speared, didn't get it. Warwick tried to pull it back a little bit so that Nidalee could get an auto attack on it. He turned around and then Warwick auto attacked the blue and took it. So that, that was just very, very poor communication on their part and just how they were managing that buff transfer. Um, then I looked bot lane, and he's positioning well. She was zoning them, and then Sivir went backwards, like, go get back in position for the next wave of farm. And then Annie decided to go in at that point, and it was just like, why are you going in now? Your allies are not there to set up that play, and you now don't, then don't have a stun to use to set up your, your play 30 seconds from now. At this point, they're also getting caught out by Warwick, it looks like. Uh, Blitz should have landed a grab onto Annie right there. I don't know why this Blitz is hesitating so much. It looks like Blitz is looking for the perfect grab, but against a Sivir, you can never really have a 100% guaranteed grab. Sejuani is coming around, it looks like it's going to become 3 versus 2. Uh, Warwick will not be able to get there in time. Uh, Caitlyn drops a pe uh, pelt over Peacemaker, pelt Sivir with auto attacks, the barrier does go down and she gets to survive. Sejuani's coming around, seeing if she can mop up, but it looks like she's choosing to go the safe route and letting them survive for another day. Sejuani waited way too long, she should have engaged immediately. Sivir, I'm not sure if her spell shield was down or not, but she got grabbed out by Blitzcrank. Caitlyn then delayed a little bit too long, flash forwarded for the Peacemaker, instead of just maybe like net auto Peacemaker flash auto to like kill her after the, the barrier was down. I just think that was a sloppy play from both sides. In the end, no one really came out too far behind. Obviously Caitlyn is going to get a little bit of farm at this point and get back into the game. But she is down 5 CS, so it's not like she's really far ahead and building a, an unstoppable advantage. 
So I, I just think both teams, if they're watching this back later once we get them uploaded to YouTube, might want to just look at that and say, okay, what, w what moment should I have engaged there? And look at how you could have positioned a little bit better, how you could have comboed a little bit better. Both teams had the possibility to make that fight go in their favor, or at least go more in their favor. Right, Blitz is hesitating. He's waiting for the perfect game-winning grab with every grab he makes. And it's important to remember that on Blitz, the miss can be as important as the grabs you hit. For instance, we talked about Victor, how if, even if you catch no one in your stun cage, it can still be wildly successful because it herded people in the direction you wanted them to go. Um, with Blitz, knowing that there is that giant robot in the bushes and he will grab you and he is like primed and ready to go is an enormous psychological factor. Mm, I'm not sure if Vigar is smart casting his Event Horizon or not, but uh, Sejuani said th it was a perfect gank setup because Nidalee tried to face check a bush. Uh, Sejuani just came around, knocked her up. V uh, Vigar was a little bit slow to respond, but he was definitely in range to land his Event Horizon. He rushed it, did not hit it, used all of his cooldowns, and hit nothing with them. And it was just a very unfortunate on both sides. Uh, good flash coming out from Riven. That being said, Jace could have done that better. Maybe at the very beginning of the fight, flashed over, knocked her back towards the, the Warwick. I think he could have set up that fight up a little bit better and won. Jace is really excellent at setting up acceleration shock blast combos. When it comes to chaining the rest of his skills together, he tends to knock people away a little early. And knocking people away does do percentage health damage. It can be quite beefy. So again, especially with a ribbon, who has so much mobility, you want to keep them close to you as much as possible, unless you can go back into uh, cannon form and just and just punish them as they run. Good spell shield by Sivir, blocking out the Caitlyn ult. We mentioned earlier that it, Caitlyn ult has been a little bit weird lately, where we're not sure if they changed the width of the particle or what, but it's a little bit more tricky to block. So Sivir was able to block that and able to spell shield it for lovely, lovely mana. Looks like Nidalee is trying to roam bot lane. Um, she could maybe get onto Annie and land a kill, but trying to 1v2, like she's not going to be able to really set anything up here. There wasn't anything for her to do mid though, so it was a good, at least, attempt. But it just didn't seem like there was that much for her to do. She will want to be careful. Vagar has surprisingly potent wave clear, especially with his W. So I'm not saying that this is the case now, but leaving him alone when he's pushed your tower can quickly lead to him gain a, an advantage over your lane. Agreed, yes. I'm not sure if Vigar's just positioning a little bit better, but it seems as though none of Nidalee's spears are connecting at the moment. Uh, whereas at the very beginning of the lane, they were almost every single one. So I'm not sure if she's just trying to not get caught out. Uh, Event Horizon does come down, lands a good chunk of damage onto Nidalee, but at this point, he does have enough mana that he's just going to be able to heal right back up. Let's talk about gold. They're only 100 gold apart. Warwick's coming down, uh, he is 6, so it looks like he may be able to get a stun on Annie. Okay. Blitz lands a grab. He gets on uh, Sivir, who pops Spell Shield, and he does die, uh, but Sivir seems to be escaping, and... That was a great Spell Shield from Sivir, but that being said, why would you try to Warwick ult someone who has the possibility of doing that? She has... Oh no, she's not Rank Cleanse, that's Caitlyn. Uh, she has the Spell Shield, though. I, I would have just saved it. Blitz, again, waited on his grab. He could have grabbed immediately. Um, like, it, it still worked out, but... I. I don't know, it just seemed a little bit sloppy. Every fight here, I keep saying that, where it's just a little bit off. A little bit off. Great uh, stun coming out. Sejuani sets up a, a lovely free kill here for the Vigar. It's important to note that um, on bot lane, it's you want to go for the target you're going to be able to kill. I see people go for the ADC, and that's understandable. In solo queue, every time you don't target the ADC, you get solo queue people going, Oh my god, you're so terrible. So I understand that, but you want to go for the guaranteed kill over the maybe, especially when you're blowing cooldowns. And especially key cooldowns like a Warwick Alt. Now, that being said, Warwick Alt isn't a huge, huge long cooldown. Like, it's almost up now, but he could have just walked bot lane, got a free assist, then walked mid lane and got a kill, then walked back bot lane. Like, it, it, it's an important cooldown regardless of how long it is. Another good Vigar stun coming out. Gets Nidalee very low, although he doesn't have his ult up just yet. Ooh, flashes the spear. Very, very nice from Vigar. Flashes right over the spear. Ignite Q auto attack. Picks up the free Nidalee kill.
it seems like Vagar just needed a little time to warm up, and now he's really uh, pulling off some great mechanics with the character. Mm -hmm. uh, fun fact about Vagar's stun cage, it actually is not a perma stun. It checks the uh, walls every four times a second. And so it's possible to actually move through Vagar's stun cage if you are moving through in that small window of opportunity. So that's something that pops up occasionally and is interesting to know about the skill. Do you just like look up random lol trivia all, all the day? That's all I do. Yeah. Oh, okay. I just wake up and I'm like, I need my fix, I need some lol trivia. <laughs> oh. Sorry, Brian in the background just said, it's fate. <laughs> Because Fate always has random tidbits, usually about lore. That's because I've been playing the game since season one, probably, and talking about the game online. I just pick stuff up, I assume. Warwick coming around onto Sejuani. Um, I'm not sure. Is Sejuani trying to set up a fight? It's very difficult to tell. Vigar does have his alt, though, gonna get yet another kill onto onto the Nidalee. In the meantime, though, Sejuani does go down to Warwick, which was fully expected. I'm just not sure why Sejuani was sitting in that bush at half health. Was she waiting for Blue to spawn? Like, it, Blue still isn't up, so I'm not sure why she was just sitting there. Ooh, very nice grab onto the Annie, get, gets her into the turret. But now Blitz is just way too aggressive and goes way back out of tower range and uh, has to flash back out. That's going to be a free tower over to Blue Team because there's no one to defend it now. Blue team and red team are neck and neck and gold though. Uh, there are small advantages that go back and forth either side, but neither one is pulling too far ahead or behind, so this should be an interesting match. Definitely a lot more even than last game. Agreed, yes. I want to compliment the, the Annie stun there. It was quite good. She got pulled. She didn't panic though. She didn't waste her flash. Uh, it's up now. It's possible it wasn't up like 10 seconds ago. But it didn't seem to have wasted her flash and was able to, to set up a pretty easy, not necessarily a kill, but a pretty easy turret as a result. Warwick coming back bot. His alt is up. I'm not, I, I think he learned his lesson last time where he doesn't want to have to alt the Sivir. Sejuani coming down to defend. He goes in, alts the Annie, and he's just caught out 1v3 now. 1v4, in fact. Blitzcrank wisely leads him to his fate, drops a ward. Uh, Blitzcrank is unable to grab the dragon though, so he, he might be able to grab a person. Caitlyn is poking from a distance, but he, unless all of purple comes around, Nidalee is coming around and positioning, but it's still going to be three on four. Uh, Spear doesn't go through, Caitlyn aces in the hole and... Oh, I, I'm not sure if Nidalee was lagged there, but she just let um, Vigar walk right up to her and kill her. Hopefully the server issues are not still affecting players. That would be unfortunate. Oh my lord. Blitz actually power fisted the dragon. Wink. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's gonna die for it, but... To oh, maybe... There he goes. Renegado gets the kill, yay. Right, we are seeing in workshops people are going for dragon much more aggressively now, which makes Chris very happy, I'm sure. It makes me so happy. So we were like saying inappropriately earlier. happy. Mm, okay, wow, um, <laughs> great. Uh, we were saying earlier that they were a hundred gold apart. Blue team now has a pretty sizable gold advantage, or a few hundred gold ahead. Uh, Riven is wrapping around. It looks like he, Jace and Riven are about to get into it. Nope, Jace uh, is waiting in the bush. Shock gates Riven. She did not know that he was there. And it looks like she's just noping out. She does not want to fight this, especially without vision. So she's just going to come around and farm. Yeah, no no Jace Riven fanfiction for us. Speak for yourself. <laughs> okay, so Sejuani does ward this time before going for blue. Looks like it's going over to, to Vigar, which is exactly what we'd expect. And Nidalee roaming back down bot. Uh, there is the pink ward in here placed by Vigar. I love that pink ward positioning. Ah, oh, that's exactly where I placed it. I didn't get a sight on who placed it, but you have my undying love. Seeing pink wards is always great. They're super undervalued. I see a lot of people go like, eh, I'll put them just hanging out at Dragon. Why not? When really, they're... Why would you want them visible? Exactly. Place them where, like, e even right now, Vigar should be able to land a kill here. 
Oh my lord. He lives with 14 health. Flash auto does pick it up, but he may actually go down in the long run. Nope. Not quite. The great escape. Uh, I want to point out, Nidalee did not walk into the bush. She would have got the speed buff, and now she's caught out. Yeah, Nidalee's passive gives her move speed for walking through brushes. Uh, she has the ward on the red buff there, so if I were her, I'd be trying to kite in and out of that bush to maintain a really nice speed advantage while chucking spears towards this evil little Santa imp. Right, Nidalee's big advantage is mobility, oh. and every time Vagar stun cages her, that is just denying her. Vagar turns around, drops a Q, and manages to survive. My gosh. I really do like the, the barrier on Nidalee, but she's just... I don't know, she's playing way too aggressively. Versus a Vigar who can just w turn around and one shot you. I'm gonna rewind it actually and watch that kill top lane because I was focused on other things. Looks like Warwick just tries to stay in 1v2, which is never a good plan. Yeah, so Riven just able to go back in and stun. In the meantime, has her shield up, so it's not like there's any real threat to Riven. So yeah, that, that's just a misplay by Warwick. You don't stay at a turret that you cannot reliably hold. Blitz is getting more aggressive with grabs, and it is working out well for bottom lane, so grabs on Blitz. Sometimes you do need time just to settle into the groove of a champion, although it does look like he's going to go down. Uh, Boomerang Blade misses, Ignite is ticking, and he's following with that auto attack range. It only takes one slip up for uh, Blitz to go down. Okay, I, I have a concern with the um, Caitlyn play there. She flash forwarded and auto attacked Sivir and didn't use her Q. I, I clicked her actually and her Peacemaker was up. Vagar lands yet another stun onto Nidalee. And this is what we're seeing every time. And this isn't uh, an insult against Nidalee, because Nidalee is very difficult to play against Vigar. Um, it's just, you need to be careful. Uh, Vigar is going to get 3v1 and ends up going down thanks to Jace's lovely hammer. Wink! Yes, I I'm very excited to see the aggressive groping coming out from Blitzcrank now. Blitzcrank, uh, there was a small no I want to make earlier. He was being chased down by Annie. Annie flashed, uh, her Q was in the air, and Blitzcrank flashed. And I feel like that was a choice made out of panic, and uh, he was dead. I understand wanting to escape, but sometimes you just gotta let the cooldown go down. Well, excellent fight up top. Riven does get the kill on Jace, but that was close. It could have gone either direction. Uh, Nidalee is going in way too close. She's trying to use Cougar form offensively, which just is not worth it anymore. Uh, she needs to be staying at very max range and using spears. There's too much CC from blue team for her to afford to go in that deep. Um, okay, so... <laughs> Sejuani ult just goes down, does not hit anyone. It looks like she was trying to check a bush with her ult. I'm not, I'm not sure what that was. Uh, Dragon does come up in 50 seconds, so they're a little early for this fight. Uh, Nidalee just chucking some spears back through. Warwick's just way too close again. It's possible, Sejuani thought. Warwick does manage to uh, bypass the Vagar sun cage. Uh, Ult Vagar. Unfortunately, his team was not able to follow up because there was a front line blocking them. If they had managed to try to uh, follow up on that Vagar ult, they would have been murdered by Sivir, Sejuani, and then so on. So. Yeah, th this is the complaint I'm having with with um, most of the people on purple team. They're playing too aggressively. They're trying to make essentially assassination plays when none of them are assassins. Nidalee lands a spear on a, a Sivir. Sivir does get trapped. Unfortunately, nothing's going to come of it. Sivir's just going to get some life steal off of the Wraith. Uh, Blitz is lurking around, waiting to see if he can pick up a grab, but I feel like they're pulling out. They know the... Oh, this is the second time now that Riven has stolen away the red buff, so... Oh, wait. Okay, she just pulled it to take it. Um, that, that's a really good play by her, to deny that resource to the purple team, and to get that nice advantage for herself, both in experience, gold, and the buff itself. Uh, so good timing on her part to say, okay, this is just a free objective I can take. It doesn't have to be a risk. Uh, Jace coming down, Riven in behind him, though. Oh, she activates her ult, but was not able to get in range. She's now a little too close, actually. Gets caught out by the blitz grab, and not able to get anyone. I will say Blue Team's vision is 
excellent. They have two pinks down. Uh, they've also had a pink down by red earlier, so they've had multiple on the field beyond what we're seeing now. Uh, they have their big buffs warded. You know, they're really making an effort to keep vision on the field, and that's really adding up for them. Mm -hmm. well, and, and I like the double pink. Like, pink wards are so powerful right now. I, everyone should be buying a pink ward. Yes, we are doing one more. Dark. I mean, they have one ward uh, off on the side of the map, um, but I'm not seeing it. And they have one at the top. I'm not seeing any like major points being warded. Uh, maybe dragon from behind when they see it's happening. But I'd like to see some more uh, ambitious warding from them. Agreed. Making them fall behind. And yes, Lex always asked me in chat if there's another workshop game. Yes, we're doing one more. Unfortunately, we did have to start late today thanks to server issues. We're going to we're gonna do one more workshop game after this, and then we're just going to call the stream for today. We're not going to push our luck. I am hosting a Minecraft server, so I might play that a little bit more today. Uh, I will be leaving it running as well, so you guys can come uh, join for some fun Minecraft bullshit. I will... That should be the slogan of the game. Fun Minecraft bullshit. I feel like that is accurate, honest... Uh, I will try to get some pictures of the posters as well, because they are gorgeous, like, professionally nice, glossy paper. Uh, I got 12 each, actually, so that's quite nice. I'm keeping a couple for myself, but... So many posters. Two dollars a poster, like, wow. That's nice. Sejuani goes in the blitz game. She gets a trap, mm. gets pulled in. That was a really oh. beautiful Sejuani alt, but unfortunately, they're not really able to turn it into much. They go one for one so far, and it looks like Jace's... No, good flash coming out from... The mm, ignite's gonna get him though. Okay, Riven will get the Jace. It looks like not gonna be able to escape though. So purple team does manage to turn a fight around. Uh, blue team's bot lane was farming, uh, and they're pushing purple, so they may be able to get a outer tower, maybe even an inhib tower. Uh, although purple is realizing what's going on, and they're sending people back to deal with that. Uh, they have Blitz and Warwick coming from base, but Nidalee is coming through the jungle. Nidalee's at half health. Issa Boomerang Blade. Uh, will she be able to escape? I doubt she'll be able to get a kill. Yeah, I, again, we just don't see any wards coming out really from Purple Team yet. And as a Nidalee, you need to have vision of everything if you're going to hope to land Spears. I, I don't know why Annie walked back in towards Nidalee. If uh, Nidalee reacted a little bit faster, she could have speared instantly, Cougar formed W, E, Q, uh, and then maybe a, a second W. It, it would have been a really easy kill, because at this point, Annie is full glass cannon. In the meantime, they do take down Warwick, thanks to Vigar's incredible burst at this point. I believe Annie was in, uh, thinking of dropping a stun on Nidalee. She did have a full stack of Pyromania charge. So I believe her intention was to drop a Q or Tibbers on Nidalee and have Caitlyn pick up the Q, uh, the kill. But uh, Caitlyn was out of range and she got better of it. Okay, fair enough. So Another spear lands here. in. Oh. That, that's very, very unfortunate. So Sivir tried to use her spell shield to get free mana off of the, the Nidalee trap. And Blitzcrank immediately reacted by spearing... Or not spearing... Oh my lord. Uh, by b grabbing, because he knew, okay, at this point there's no risk. They've already taken out the spell shield. Nidalee just barely able to get away from the grab and the Jace damage using a quick, quick uh, reposition. Uh, good job escaping that, but unfortunate on that sever. Just a little too greedy, saying, like, I want free mana. Well, yeah, but you're walking into a very dangerous position to do so. Seeing a lot of excellent ribbon mechanics coming out from uh, Blue Team. Uh, she's very aware of how much damage she can put out and how much damage she can take. And she has gone down a couple of times, but it's rare in this late game stage that she goes down needlessly. She usually takes one or two people with her. Jace is landing an excellent poke in her ass. Their team is excellent at sieging poking. And it makes me a little disappointed that they aren't doing prolonged campaigns of uh, sieging down a tower. Uh, instead, they seem really eager to get into it and have a toe-to-toe -to -toe fight which is not wise with this full conspiracy. It is interesting, though, that the, the gold advantage isn't that far towards blue team. They're up about th just under 3k gold, but there's a, about a 9 kill difference right now. So it's not as though they're just snowballing out of control. The, the gold difference is pretty much just the kills.
dragon fights have gone both ways. Um, this is not, uh, as a result of your commentary on the stream, I believe dragon is highly contested. So you're not seeing a lot of uh, games where it's, uh, one team just scoops up dragon over and over again, and that does help uh, account for the close gold counts. Uh, Annie decides to use her stun just on Blitzcrank. Personally, I'd be saving that, but either way, great job. Uh, Riven able to get in, and they're, they're able to take out the AD carry immediately. At that point, it is a 4 for 0, so they absolutely mopped up that fight. Nidalee is the only one left up, and unfortunately, they're not able to catch her out, but this is, should be a free tower. Vagar is Vagar is doing an excellent job of staying cool under pressure. Warwick is repeatedly holding on to him. Um, and for instance, he walks up, he knows he can get Nidalee Spear, but instead he drops the stun. He knows his character's capabilities. He knows his strengths. So when Warwick ults onto him, he just drops the stun cage and waddles away with his little yordle swag walk. Because mm -hmm. he knows what he can do, and that's that's quite paid off for him. Blue team thinking to take away the blue buff on their way out. Really good thinking. Red buff is up, and they've decided not to take it this time. If I were them, I might have split off a little bit more. Dragon isn't for 25 seconds, so I would have taken both enemy buffs, done a quick heal and buy, and then rushed towards Dragon. Because you would have been able to get there before the enemy team was able to really do anything about it. Just wondering, do you know what the the logic is behind wards down middle lane? I've seen it in multiple games, and I'm not 100% sure myself. Yes, uh, you use them to snipe from long range, and you use them to catch people out as they switch between lanes. So placing one um, where the towers would generally be, it gives you really good vision of them trying to cycle between the different sides of the jungle, and it also gives you really long range vision to be able to catch people out. Um, it, it's even more important if you're playing someone like Caitlyn Nidalee, who, who want to be able to get vision and snipe from a really far range. Caitlyn taking Baron over a wall, Warwick is now able to tank that. Now Warwick is going to be a huge Baron threat, and I'm interested to see how this... Uh, I'm assuming it's just going to go uncontested. Blue team is happy to just go take Dragon instead. Right, they do take Dragon completely uncontested. Uh, good call by Purple Team. They saw Blue Team are down south and they went, F it, let's take it. And, you know, it went off without a hitch. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've complimented Blue Team's warding quite a few times. And Purple Team went in and sort of cleared out the wards there. And Blue Team didn't really react to that. They didn't think, hmm, they're clearing out wards of Baron. Maybe they're going to do Baron. So that, that's unfortunate for them, but really, really good call. I will say no response can sometimes be better than a panicked response. For sure. I'm not uh, uh, saying that yeah, Blue Team did this on purpose, but as a solo queue player, it is infuriating when one person sees that they're taking Baron and has visions dancing of their head of some pro-worthy steal when really they just run in 1D5. So at least Blue Team avoided that fate. Agreed. Nidalee Spears are going now, mostly eating air so far. Purple team is scattered, while blue team is, with the exception of Sejuani, who is in the back, they're moving as a unit. If they catch a purple team out, Baron will have way less of an impact on the upcoming team fight. You know what I really want to try and solo queue on, like a smurf or something? Is, um, they, they were sort of half joking, half serious about it yesterday in the LCS, where they were saying that Fiora is an amazing jungler right now because of the new spirit stone item because she doesn't have mana issues or health issues from it So she can just pretty much farm up and it's like I kind of just want to do that I played Fiora mid in season 3. I mean Fiora jungle in season 3 and I want to be like it works fine uh, The biggest problem is that you're getting Tibber's stun sick. comes in onto Caitlyn and Blitzcrank But just team isn't there. They need to be keeping an eye on where the team is and how quickly they can respond to these fights Ziver takes a spear to the face, Jace flashes in, hammers her to the face, and gets another free kill. So at this point, they have made it a 5v3, and they should be able to press in on mid. Sejuani alt is down, so they don't really have anything besides the... Ooh, that Vigar. I was just going to say, Vigar still has his AoE stun, but outside that, they don't have anything to really hold the turret. Uh, he does turn around, though, and lands a quick kill onto Blitzcrank. Not able to take Caitlyn down, though, or Warwick down. So it's pretty much just this little Yordle here trying to hold 1v4 now. Why doesn't he have the Vagar Greybeard skin? Then we can make a you shall not pass joke, but like, Christmas... It's it's dark. because he's bad. Oh, game paused. I assume someone is having technical issues. It, it's likely, yes. Does that mean it's time for jokes? No. Did you hear about the circus fire? It was intense! No. 
Uh, uh, someone was mentioning in in the stream chat that we should find an MMO to make a guild on. Um, I like MMOs, sort of, but I get bored of them really quickly. Uh, the only MMOs I've ever really played for a long period of time were Conquer Online, which I've written many, many private server sources for, but I wouldn't really want to just play it anymore. I, I don't really have an interest in hosting a server for it. And I played a little bit of WoW. It got old really quickly. And I played some Guild Wars too. But outside that, it's it's not like there's any MMOs I really want to play right now. Maybe when like Elder Scrolls Online gets released, I might try that because Brian's obsessed with it already. And the, like I, I might try some new games, but there's no MMOs out right now that I really want to play. I'm going to take a quick moment to pimp the MMO I'm playing at the time. It's called The Secret World. And I'm going to be frank and to talk about its weaknesses straight up. You know how World of Warcraft is like a game that has been honed unto perfection? And you know, like questing is so smooth, everything is designed to be basically the perfect Skinner box. Well, The Secret World is like the opposite of WoW. It's kind of a crappy game, but the story and the world and the writing are all super good. It's a... Uh, I find it funny because I skip every single one of those elements in every game I play. It's a... Uh, oh my gosh, you're terrible. What's wrong with you? I don't think I've ever read a single line of text in World of Warcraft. Well, I, you're not missing much. It's all well, no, but like a any of those games, I just install an add-on that skips all text because I don't want to see that shit. Okay, yeah, the Sleek World is not a good game for you because you are an uncultured Philistine who probably like watches football and drinks beer and gets like scurvy. No, I just like Chinese MMO grinding games where you just mindlessly grind for six hours in a row. That's terrible. Riven goes in but gets a uh, world exalted. You can win following up though. Uh, oh, the, the Blitzcrank grabs the Sejuani. Unfortunately, it doesn't react quick enough to land the stun, but Vigar is able to land his cage off of the slow portion of it. Uh, so really good fight there. Uh, Riven actually was able to block all of the damage coming out from the Warwick ult just by shielding into it, essentially. Um, they could have reacted slightly quicker and caught out more of Purple Team, but either way, fantastic fight and being able to just sort of cycle aggro properly and make make that fight go in their favor. In the meantime, Riven goes in, gets onto Nidalee, and then they're able to turn onto Blitzcrank right after that. I would assume this is actually going to be the end of the game. There's about 30 second respawn timers, all of their carries are alive, and only Jace and Warwick to defend. It's possible though that, yeah, it looks like they're going to go for a second inhib instead. Right, I'll take a moment just to nominate my MVPs for the game. Um, Vagar is obviously the team's MVP. He enables the other team members in team fights with his with awesome stuns all game long. His burst just erases people from the game, and he really he didn't solo carry, but he enabled his team to do great things and just and just shut down middle lane. So props to Vagar. As to, as to purple team, I'd have to say Jace would be MVP. He did an uh, excellent poke, he won his lane initially, and while Va uh, Riven did catch up, he continued to apply pressure all game long and uh, just set up some really excellent engages just by knowing his strengths and knowing to stand back and poke instead of going in. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, as we said earlier, Jace is a problematic character and they've nerfed him quite extensively. But that doesn't mean you can't play him well, and he has done a good job with him this game, so props. Oh, I miss the whimsical sales announcements. Yeah, I, they had to stop that because essentially uh, it took a fair amount of time, and apparently, and it would actually like piss the writers off when they're like, oh, we're not going to put that skin on sale because uh, we changed our mind. We, we realized it was on sale last month, so we're going to do this one instead. And the writers would be like, I just wrote a fucking sales announcement. Yeah. So, unfortunately, Riot writers are lazy, TLDR. I still liked them, though. I, I think my favorite was the, the Mundo ones, obviously. I feel like the the, actually, no, I, that's a lie. The bro laugh sales announcements were my favorite, where they're like, we need to raise money because our frat house is being fined and that sort of shit. Uh, blue team taking away another dragon now. I would expect them. Uh, Baron's not... A, oh, oh, no, my, it's 30 seconds. They don't have an exact timer on it, but they know approximately when it was taken. So if I were them, I'd be trying to get some wards in there. Uh, if they then catch anyone out, which they're doing to Nidalee right now, they can turn that into a free Baron or they can just end the game. That's perfectly up to them. They can do either. Learning to keep timers is such a useful skill. I won't say it's an essential skill, but It's like, an essential skill. 
Well, at bronze. Mm. If you don't have a team that will follow up, when I say it's not an essential skill, I mean, like, at plat, someone else will probably do it. But, like, if you keep it up, you will win games for your team. In low elo, if you keep a timer and just think, hmm, their blue buff is spawning in 10 seconds, I'm full health and just sent them back, the impact you have on those games goes through the roof. Your team doesn't even have to listen to you. Just knowing where the enemy is going to move to lets you set up your own decision making and allows you to play so much better. Uh, Blitzcrank coming around. I don't think he's going to be able to boop the Baron. Blue team just seamless and switches on to purple. Uh, it's not a even engage. It seems to be four on four right now in base. Jace picks up an amazing shot blast, takes down most of their team, but uh, Sejuani turns and avenges her fallen brethren. A spear manages to get Caitlyn right in the face. So right now, Blue and Purple each have two people up. Uh, so Baron has been uh, stalled, and neither team will be able to take it quite yet. That was a bit sloppy. Um, the reason being is that Vygar used his entire burst combo on Warwick, who just turned around and unalted. So he needed to save that for a priority target, and Warwick, not that big of a threat right now. He's pretty tanky, but it's not like having a Warwick alive makes you win the game. Whereas having a, a Nidalee or a Caitlyn or something like that, they're going to be able to constantly poke back onto you, and they're much, much more useful of that very long cooldown. Blue team does an excellent job of going, yes, we are at half health, but we're going to cycle around and try to put pressure on objectives. But will Annie be able to escape? Run, Annie! Run! But with timers, it is uh, five minutes for red and blue. It is six minutes for dragon and seven minutes for baron. I have a concern that... Um Annie keeps running through most of that, where she could have just dropped a quick W and kept running. Instead, she waited until she was already caught out. She might not have escaped, but she could have played a little bit better. Purple team going around for another swing at Baron. Uh, will blue team be able to contest? We have Vagar at blue at half health. We have Riven top. Uh, yeah, Annie's dead, Sejuani's in base, and Vigar's somewhat low. I would expect purple team to take this uncontested. Like, they, they know that it's there now, but they're not going to be able to 2v5 or 3v5. Riven and Vanguard are dancing around and looking for an opportunity. Jace is defending Baron. He's laying down Shock Blast. He's saying, we know that you're there, and get out. He's doing a really excellent job. Blitzcrank is tanking. Uh, literally goes down to burst. He's, uh, they, uh, Vanguard has won some time for their team. Sivir's coming in. She's applying pressure. Riven comes in. Picks up a double kill in Baron pit. The team just moves as one to pick up Baron and get... Uh, the quadra, not the quadra, but four of uh, purple team down. Yeah, Excellent. four for zero there. Just absolute stomp in that fight where they kept pulling people towards them, and as a result, they're able to then make picks. Where Vigar able to pick up a free kill onto Nidalee because Nidalee went too close instead of staying at very, very max range. And Nidalee made that mistake a number of times through this game. Not to say that she played badly, but that's not something you can really afford to do. I just want to congratulate Vagar. Vagar was in a super dangerous situation. Jace knew he was there. Jace had range on him. Vagar was at half health. Vagar could have just been like, F this, I'm out. And instead he danced around. He put his trinket down. He got vision on the objective. And then he stalled and let his team come in. And Vagar could have died there. But he really did a solid effort. He he survived. But even if he had died, he really just he put him hit the team's need ahead of his own uh, death count. So amazing job over there. Agreed. Now overall builds. Um, I'm not sure why the Avarice Blade is on Sivir. Uh, eh, her build is fine. I I just don't know what she's building with the Avarice Blade. I'm assuming it would have been for a static shiv, but then she went and finished Phantom Dancer. It's probably she aborted the build and decided to go for Phantom Dancer instead. So shiv is better for split push and burst, which is kind of what Sivir focuses on. So I would usually prefer it over Phantom Dancer, but Phantom Dancer has come back in a big way now that AD carries actually care about their team fight again, their late game team fighting potential. <laughs> Uh, Vigar, really standard build. He picked up a little bit of uh, magic resist, which I'm assuming would have been built into a Quicksilver Sash or a Banshee's Veil. Either one would have uh, kept him even more safe if the Warwick is trying to jump onto him and also protect him from any Nidalee Spears that come at him. 
Uh, pretty standard build coming out from Riven, no real complaints there. Uh, would have liked to maybe see a Guardian Angel coming out hyper late game, but again, not really needed. Sejuani actually goes for Magic Burn a little bit. I kind of like that build. It, it's interesting. I'm not really having complaints with it. I just don't usually expect to see a Leandri's Torment on a Sejuani. Uh, you could have possibly swapped that out for like a Randuin's or a uh, Banshee's Veil if you were having an issue. But uh, again, I have no real complaints. It, it's perfectly fine what you built. Any a uh, little bit too much AP, I'd almost say. No gold per 10 item. And that then means no utility. Having a... Uh, I don't even know what it's called now. It's the coin item. Talisman of Ascension, that's what it is. I would have given you a lot more cooldown for more tabers, more alts, more stuns. And it also would have given your team a nice active for chasing and peeling. Uh, on the split side, we have a Caitlyn. Really, really standard build. She was building into Infinity Edge last item. Nothing out of the ordinary there. Blitzcrank, pretty standard build as well with the uh, Age of the Legion and the Talisman of Ascension. Good choice there. Uh, Jace, uh, yeah, pretty much what Jace builds. You get a early Cleaver, you get an early Last Whisper, and you'll oftentimes, uh, like Maw is fine, oftentimes you do Bloodthirster instead, but then going into tank items. So yeah, a pretty standard there. Warwick, I might have suggested a little bit more magic resist, maybe like a Banshee's Veil, or, or something to help deal with that Vigar who is constantly bursting you. The There's just a lot of magic damage coming out onto him. Nidalee, I might have suggested... Uh, I don't like the Death Cap Rush. is basically my only complaint there. I might have suggested Void Staff first. But, I, again, it, it's fine. I don't really have any large complaints there. Overall, great job, everyone. Hopefully you guys will be able to watch these games back later on once we've uploaded them to YouTube. Uh, someone was saying no tier on Jace. Tier is a terrible item. Don't build it. You, you've, it's pretty much just not built anymore. Jace used to be able to uh, cheese tier. His ult switch in would charge it, and then, uh, you know, it. Riot realized that both Nidalee and Jace were doing that, and I believe it least so well, and removed it. 